child star no more. Beautiful Andrea Brillant wows everyone with her transformation 5 is spectacular. Remember that chubby cute girl from Annalisa who broke our hearts in the year 2013? She was played by the charming Andrea Brillant alongside different veteran actors namely Zanjo Maruto, Patrick Garcia and Kay Abad. It ran for almost a year because of its good ratings. Despite being with seasoned celebrities, Brillant's proved her innate acting talent and excelled in the said series. Today, Brillant's continued to shine. She has learned how to grow beautifully away from the eyes and judgments from the public. Now a 13-year-old, Brillant's wows everyone with her beautiful features in her current endorsements particularly in a prominent magazine. She posted some BTS pictures from the shoot and fans can't help fangirl over her. With her rocking bangs and defined brows, guys surely gush over this young lady as her blossoming years are still ahead of her. We'll see more of you, our dear Annalisa. Invite you to watch the video. Female DLSU student jumps off to her death from the 20th floor of Bro. Andrew Hall DLSU faculty and students are still in shock after an accounting female student jumped from 20th floor. According to initial reports, the incident was an alleged suicide as the railings were high enough for accidents. The Salalian, the school's official publication, posted tweets pertaining to the incident, breaking, staircase and Andrew Hall impassable at the moment due to an incident. The investigation is ongoing. Elevators are currently usable. Security officers and Stratcom are unable to comment on the matter as of press time due to ongoing investigations. The entranceway of Andrew Hall leading to Fidel Reyes Street has been closed. Students are advised to take the Taft entrance instead. Despite the Fidel Reyes entrance being closed, classes are still ongoing at Andrew Hall. Witnesses go detailing the incident as a text message went extremely viral describing the incidents. According to the message, the student tried holding on to the fifth floor in the middle of the fall, but due to the extreme force, her arm got cut off while her inner organs were also exposed as she hit the ground hard. Invite you to watch the video. Viral. Daniel Padilla does a demonic hand gesture? Is he an Illuminati? Read this. The annual Star Magic Ball event is one of the most awaited events in the showbiz industry. They tend to wait and see what their favorite celebrities would wear and who'd be their date. Now, in the Star Magic Ball 2016, Daniel Padilla walked on the red carpet with his leading lady Catherine Bernardo. They were both stunning in the said event, wearing their matchy-matchy black outfit, they really stood out from the rest. A photo of the lovely couple that was taken from the event is now circulating online. The said photo shows the couple showing their wackiest post. But what people have noticed is the hand gesture of Daniel. They believe that the actor posed for the camera using a satanic hand gesture. The said gesture of Daniel Padilla became a big deal after some Facebook users said that he's doing a demonic hand gesture. L-U-H C-B-Z-O, demonic sign ang Naya. One netizen posted as a caption of Cap Neal's photo. It was then stated that Daniel only did such gesture for a photo and that he's known for being a believer of God. Invite you to watch the video. Government offers newly improved postal ID which can be used for passport application. Here's how to apply. Applying for passport can be such a pain. Aside from the long lines you have to endure and scheduling the appointment itself, it requires so much documents and legalities. For one, it requires two valid IDs. When you're a fresh graduate or a housewife or a freelancer, this can be a very difficult requirement. But now, the government is now offering a significantly improved postal ID which can be used for the passport application and is valid for three years. It has a security feature like the UMID as well. All you need to prepare is P504.00 which already covers the fee for the ID card delivery fee and a 12% VAT. This is how you apply for them. Postal ID requirements. 1. Two copies of duly accomplished PID, postal identification, form. 2. Proof of identity, you can submit one of the following. Birth certificate issued by NSO or local civil registry, GSIS or SSSUM ID card, valid driver's license, 
valid passport, marriage certificate for married females, 3. Secondary proof of identity, applicants with no birth certificate, UMID card, driver's license or passport may submit any two, two, of the following documents, at least one of which should bear the applicant's photo and signature, BIRID, baptismal certificate, certificate of birth, college or postgraduate transcript of records, confirmation certificate, elementary or high school form 137, marriage certificate, valid alumni ID, valid basic postal ID, valid college, school or university ID, valid company ID, valid integrated bar of the Philippines, IBP, ID, valid NBI clearance, valid OWWA ID, valid PAG IBIG ID, valid PhilHealth ID, valid PRC ID, valid paper-based postal ID, valid police clearance, valid Siemens book, valid senior citizen ID, valid tax identification number card, valid voters ID, submit any one, one, of the following, Barangay Certificate of Residency issued within three, three months, prior to PID application, certified true copy of lease, certified true copy of titles issued by the Land Registration Authority, LRA, certified true copy of real estate tax receipt, bank statement, credit card statement, school billing statement, utility bill, cable, electric, internet, landline, telephone, water, for foreign applicants, please refer to Postal and PH official website. Procedure, once you have all necessary requirements, submit it to your nearest, Postal ID Capture Station to have your picture and fingerprint taken. To know the nearest to your area, you can refer to this link. And done. You just need to wait for your postal id to be delivered, right at your doorstep. Here are the estimated delivery times for your postal id, 15 working days, for Metro Manila address, 20 working days, for other major cities and municipalities, 30 working days for island provinces and remote barangays. If you have questions about your postal ID, you may contact the following numbers which are official Phil Post contact numbers, 0917, 5,215,373, 0998, 8,847,629, 0925, 3,250,000, 91. Invite you to watch the video. Japan to open gates temporarily for foreign unskilled workers, send us your construction workers, your caregivers, your store clerks, but for a limited time only. That's the message from Japan, where the number of foreign workers, though still relatively small, has nearly doubled over the past eight years, and Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's ruling party is considering policies to speed up arrivals. Just don't call it immigration. Japan will allow more unskilled workers to enter temporarily, as companies struggle to fill positions in a country with the lowest unemployment rate among group of seven nations. Abe has made it clear that opening the country to permanent immigration by unskilled labor isn't an option, reflecting a historic fear among the Japanese people that foreigners would cause social unrest and erode national identity. In Japan, the word immigrant is not used in policymaking. Former Economy Minister Heizo Takenaka said in an interview Tuesday. The Prime Minister often says it's not immigration, it's guest workers. Masahiko Shibayama, a lawmaker and advisor to Abe, is among those testing the boundaries as policymakers seek to meet the needs of a country with a shrinking population. He has called for a guest worker program that would give five-year visas for sectors suffering from labor shortages. Yet he noted that even a recent tourism boom has raised questions among Japanese about how many foreigners should be here. For ordinary people, they see the rapid increase in foreign tourists and they see more foreigners downtown, so it's not strange that some think, is it good that it's increasing this much? Shibuyama said in an interview, I think it's important to establish a culture that accepts foreign workers. However, in the case of Japan, It'll be totally different from a large number of refugees that went to Europe, so I don't think public opinion will be split on the issue. The cross-border flow of workers has animated politics across the world, including the U.S. presidential election campaign and the U.K.'s vote to leave the European Union. In Japan, 
Immigration is widely touted as one of the few obvious solutions to its demographic and economic challenges. Economists point to it as a source of growth as well as labor. The government projects Japan's population of 127 million will shrink by 19 million people by 2040. Central Bank Governor Haruhiko Kuroda said in a speech last week in Tokyo that more foreign labor is essential for Japan to achieve sustainable long-term growth. Japan needs the help now. A 2015 manpower survey found that 83% of Japanese hiring managers had difficulty filling jobs, compared with a global average of 38%. An Indonesian nurse takes care of an elderly woman in Tokyo in November 2014. An Indonesian nurse takes care of an elderly woman in Tokyo in November 2014. The government has taken a more welcoming approach to highly skilled foreign workers who are the objects of a global war for talent. Abe this year vowed to provide them with the world's fastest path to permanent residency. Currently, a person generally becomes eligible for permanent residency after living in Japan for 10 consecutive years. On the other hand, Though it depends on unskilled foreigners in some sectors, Japan has no visa categories under which they can enter the country to work, never mind become permanent residents or citizens. It instead uses back doors such as a training program, ostensibly aimed at training people from developing nations with skills they can use at home, but in practice a guest worker system which the U.S. State Department has criticized as prone to abuse, including conditions of forced labor. Still. The number of foreign workers in Japan has jumped from about 486,000 in 2008 to nearly 908,000 in 2015. About 190,000 work under the training program. Lawmakers in Abe's Liberal Democratic Party are supporting a bill that will expand the training program to include workers in elder care as well as manufacturing and agriculture. An LDP proposal would allow participants to stay up to five years, compared with three years currently. Japan will also be in need of construction workers as it races to build and renovate facilities for the 2020 Olympics in Tokyo. To be sure, immigration is no panacea for Japan. Barry Bosworth, a senior fellow at the Brookings Institution in Washington, said it would raise growth but cautioned that it was no substitute for the structural reforms needed to overcome the country's economic stagnation. The influx of workers is already being seen on some streets in Tokyo. In the Akibo Kuro neighborhood, an emerging Chinatown, the Chinese language is heard frequently and shops advertise favorites such Shanghai specialty fried dumplings. Thank you for watching videos, you remember the likes and comments below, thanks.